Two young people go far and away in their quest for freedom. One is an Irish farmer who doesn't want to work under oppressive landlords and wants to have land of his own. The other one is an English lady who is wary of the expectations of the elite class she belongs to and wants to live on her own terms. These are the times around the 1890s when rebellion against tyrannical English landlords is brewing among oppressed tenants in Ireland. The movie opens with angry tenants verbally abusing a landlord passing through their village on his carriage. Joe Donnelly calls him a heartless sinner who cares about nothing but money. One of the villagers throws a stone at the landlord, knocking off his hat. The landlord fires his gun to scare away the villagers gathering around him with their sticks. While rushing, his carriage crashes into some wood columns and causes them to tumble down, crushing Joe. Joe's head is bleeding. He asks his friends to take him home to his sons. Joe has three sons. Patty and Comb are good for nothing. Joseph, the youngest one, is a diligent lad. He works hard to take care of rented land. He is clearing the land of stones when his drunk brothers tease him for laboring this much. He asks them to stop disturbing him. They say they want to wrestle. Joseph knows they will not let go until he does give them what they want. He punches Comb in the face. Comb and Patty hit him back. It drives Joseph to fight back more aggressively. They look unstoppable until Dandy Duff calls out to them. He has brought their injured father on a donkey cart. Joseph takes Joe inside and tends to his wounds. Patty and Comb stand near, while Dandy Duff can't stop making up false glorified stories of how Joe got injured. Joseph asks him to be silent. Joe mumbles that he feels his time has come. Joseph asks him not to say such things. Joe starts singing his favorite song and he expires. Dandy pats poor Joseph and blesses Joe's departed soul. Patty thinks now they are free to sell off their shares in the property. Joseph can't believe him worrying about that now. Comb expresses his anger at their father for leaving them massively in debt. Joseph says the debt can be paid off only if they all work on the land. His brothers aren't up for that. Work isn't their cup of tea. Joseph is about to step forward to beat his brothers when all of a sudden Joe holds his arm. Joe who has apparently expired a moment ago. Everyone is startled and scared. Danny Duff falls into a chair and is scratching his head in confusion. Joe asks Joseph to come near. He has come back to life for a few moments only to tell him something. He says Joseph is a maverick with dreams in his head. Joe has also been like this, ambitious and dreaming big. But dreams don't get fulfilled in an impoverished place like theirs. Joseph tells his father that he will not let his dreams go unfulfilled. His dream is to have his own land and to work on it for himself. Joe says that if Joseph ever gets successful in achieving his dream, Joe will be proud of him. Because a man is nothing without his own land. Joseph nods. Joe expires again and for good while singing the same song. The villagers are helping the Donnelly boys carry their deceased father's coffin to bury. Three English men on horses come riding there. They are men of Donnelly's landlord Daniel Christie. Donnelly's rent is overdue. The landlord's men can't wait and don't care if there is a funeral going on. They have started to burn down Donnelly's house to the ground. Nobody can live on land if they can't pay off its rent. Joseph wants to take revenge on Daniel Christie. Danny gives Joseph a rifle to smoke Daniel Christie. It is an old rusty gun. Danny reveals the rebel's secret code word, Captain Moonlight, a reference to a bushranger Alexander Charles Scott. The next morning, Joseph rides his donkey and embarks on his mission to avenge his burned house. Danny had told the entire village about Joseph's plan. Seems like the secret code word isn't a secret anymore. Danny's talkativeness got the best of him. Amid the encouraging remarks by villagers and discouraging comments from his brothers, Danty says goodbye. On his way, he stops by a pub. He orders an ale. The men are interested to know where he is from. Joseph says he'd rather be not friendly with strangers. An English gentleman enters the pub. He is a cheerful and vivacious fellow. Everyone seems to enjoy his company and jokes. Joseph smiles at his carefree and cordiality until someone addresses the fellow with his name, Mr. Daniel Christie. Joseph looks at him with loathing and fury. Daniel says he is too young to be this serious. The bartender tells Daniel that this young man wants to maintain his matters private. Daniel says he must be on a journey to love or business. Joseph sarcastically says it is not love by any means. Daniel says it means he is into business then, and goes on to tell how he doesn't like being in business. His house and life are dull. His wife doesn't allow him to drink. He rather has the freedom of a few moments than anything he has. Joseph pauses before saying that freedom for sure is a luxury in Ireland. Daniel agrees. Daniel is on his way to his house after getting drunk in the pub. He walks through the woods with his horse and sings. He is quite tipsy. Joseph is behind him with his donkey and rifle, hiding among bushes and trees. He is trying hard to get the best aim possible but no success so far. He has held his donkey's reins in one hand. The moment he is about to shoot, his donkey breaks away, making him fall to one side and lose his target. Daniel takes a turn and enters the premises of his house. Joseph follows and sees a grand mansion instead of the dull house Daniel described in the pub. Vast gardens, a stable and servants. As Joseph watches the luxurious housing the landlords have built ripping off the tenants, his jaw drops. Joseph sneaks into the stables and sleeps there through the night. He is woken up by someone shouting at someone for not acting like a respectable lady, 
and riding a horse wildly in the fields. It is Mrs. Nora Christie chiding her daughter, Shannon Christie. Joseph sees Shannon entering the stable to tie her horse. He holds his breath and stays hiding in a box. Shannon ties her horse and sits on a stool. Joseph is peeping at her through a crack in the box door. She takes off her coat and loosens her collar. All of a sudden, she stops to look at the box Joseph is hiding. She gets up and asks if anyone is here. Joseph stays silent. She hurls a horseshoe into the box from where she is standing. On seeing no movement, she exits the stable. Joseph is relieved. He picks up the horseshoe she has thrown. He is leaning against the door when a digging fork is pierced through it. He was an inch away from getting stabbed. He runs out of the box but is cornered by Shannon aiming the digging fork at him. He tries to ditch her, but she stabs his leg with the fork. She did so in complete panic and fear. Joseph looks as if he never expected her to do it. She runs off calling for her father. Joseph limps to the outside, dragging his rifle along. Daniel in his nightgown has come running to his yelling daughter. Joseph addresses Daniel and says he has stripped him of his land. He aims his gun at Daniel and fires. The gun is too old to function. It recoils and instead fires backwards right at poor Joseph. Shannon looks stunned and can't help but keep looking at the fallen Joseph. Her mother orders her to get back inside. Nora and her servants are nursing the wounded and unconscious Joseph. Shannon is curious to know why her mother is taking care of a person she considers low-born and dirty. Nora says they plan to hang him for his crime afterwards. She pulls sheets off his legs and asks Shannon to turn her back to the naked Joseph. Shannon obliges. Nora places a bowl upside down to cover his privates. Before she could clean his injured leg, she hears Daniel breaking something downstairs. She knows he is trying to get a liquor bottle secretly and broke some glass. She goes to look. Shannon is alone with Joseph who is still lying unconscious. Joseph wakes up and grabs her. Before she could shout, he places his hand over her mouth and says to her that he wants his land. He falls unconscious again. Nora has informed Shannon to stay prepared to attend to guests coming over. The fine ladies of their class are invited for regular tea. Shannon doesn't want to be in the company of snobs. Nora strictly asks her to comply and behave well. The guests are here and having tea. They can't believe a criminal is inside the house. Nora says he looks like a devil. Shannon rolls her eyes. Shannon feels suffocated in her fitted high-collared dress. Her mother says it is better to suffocate than to dress improperly. They all get startled by a noise outside the drawing room assuming it is the wounded scoundrel. It turns out to be Captain Stephen Chase to their utmost delight. They all look at him admiringly. He charms them with his gentlemanly behavior, sugary talks and good looks. He greets them and goes to talk with Shannon whom he hopes to marry. He studies at Cambridge and handles business and finances for Nora. All the women say Shannon is indeed very lucky to have him. Nora can't help but flaunt him. Well, Stephen Chase is the very man who came riding on his horse and burnt down Joseph's house. Nora asks Shannon to play the piano for the ladies. Shannon refuses to everyone's shock and her mother's embarrassment. Stephen asks Shannon politely. She sits at the piano and starts playing a soft melody. Everybody is enjoying until she shifts to hip-hop cheerful tunes. Nobody seems to find it amusing. It is so not ladylike. Shannon says she likes it this way. It is modern and famous in America. Suddenly her gaze falls on Joseph who has managed to get dressed and limp downstairs. He falls down the stairs in an attempt to run. All the women panic and shriek. A gunman and a servant come running. Stephen stands over Joseph who is lying on the floor. Joseph looks up at him and says he is the one who burned his house. Stephen says he has burned many. Joseph pulls the carpet out from Stephen's feet, making him fall down. Joseph gets up and pushes away the approaching guard and pins Stephen down with his foot on his chest. Joseph spits in his face. Daniel has come as well. The guard hits Joseph's already injured leg with his rifle's butt. Joseph falls to one side. Stephen gets up, wipes his face and challenges Jospe to a gunfight tomorrow morning. Shannon is looking at Joseph in awe. His valor is admirable. Joseph is pacing in the locked room. He hears a ladder thud against the room's window. It is Shannon. She climbs into the room and says she is running away. Joseph is too bruised to pay attention to her waywardness. She goes on to tell what she is up to. She came with an excuse that she has something to pick from the room. She says she plans to go to America to have her own land and ride horses the way she wants. She doesn't want to end like other rich snobby women in upper society. She shows him a flyer which says many pieces of land are being given to people for free. Joseph snatches the flyer from her, crumples it and throws it on the floor. He says it is impossible to get land for free on earth, and asks why she needs land when she already has acres of it by snatching his and his people's. Shannon argues she has no part in this. She asks him to board the ship with her. Ships leaving from Dublin and Liverpool for America. A woman needs a man with her to travel. She says she can hire him as her servant. Joseph asks her to leave as he doesn't want to be a servant to entitled people like her. Shannon leaves warning him that Stephen will defeat him in the gunfight and shoot him. Joseph thinks it is below him to run away from a challenge. Today's morning is very foggy. They are in the field for the gunfight. Countdown starts. Joseph holds his pistol but can't see anything in the fog. Before Stephen could fire, Shannon comes riding a horse cart. 
She passes by Joseph and offers to jump on the cart for his life. She is eloping. At first, Joseph refuses but seeing he stands no chance in front of Stephen, he jumps on the cart and both of them flee. Nora has come running and yelling at Shannon to stop. Two of them are on a ship sailing towards America. Shannon is sitting in her chair. Joseph is serving her tea. She saved his life and Joseph should be grateful to her in exchange. A gentleman who calls himself Maguire comes up to Shannon and asks for her company on a stroll across the ship. Joseph tells him the lady is busy having tea. Shannon says she is happy to give company to the man. She asks Joseph to hold an umbrella above her. Maguire resides in Boston. He confirms that lands are being distributed in Oklahoma. He says there will be a race to claim land. One needs to have horses and a cart for that. He is referring to land run of Oklahoma. Shannon says she doesn't have cash on hand. All she has are antique spoons she plans to sell for money. Maguire says he can tell her which shop to go to to get a good price. Shannon is grateful for his kindness. She comes back to sit at her table where Joseph is acting no more like a servant. He is savoring a cake. He says to Shannon that he isn't getting good vibes from Maguire. They have landed in Boston. Shannon feels happy to make it finally. She waves at Maguire who was heading somewhere else. He reluctantly comes up to her and says he can find her a good hotel to stay in. Shannon thanks Joseph for accompanying him on the ship as part of their deal. They wish each other good luck. Joseph walks away. We see a wave of sadness over Shannon's face. Suddenly some men shoot Maguire who falls down into Shannon's shock. Her spoons fall out of his coat. He had stolen her spoons on the ship. People around pick up the spoons and dash away. Shannon cries for help and asks them to stop. She calls Joseph back who runs after a man running away with Shannon's bag. Police arrive. Joseph asks Shannon to get away. They start walking. Shannon is crying her eyes out. She feels God is punishing her for stealing spoons from her mother. She is broke now. Joseph hears a little boy calling out for Irish men to meet an alderman who will take care of them. Joseph asks him to take them there. The boy, named Dermody, brings Joseph and Shannon to the club. Mike Kelly is the boss here. It is crowded with men watching Mike Kelly boxing with a man. There are burlesque dancers up on stage, women dressed. Joseph asks Shannon to stay back. She says she isn't weak. She can handle a boxing match. Mike Kelly punches his opponent whose blood flies to smear Shannon's face. She gasps, distracting Mike Kelly who looks at her. The opponent punches Mike Kelly to the floor and wins. Mike isn't happy and is angrily pointing at Shannon for making him lose. Joseph shields her and tells Mike that it was his own fault as he didn't concentrate. Mike snickers at Joseph and calls him a combative Irish. He asks him to come along. Shannon starts to join. Mike snaps at her and asks her to stay where she is. She argues. Joseph introduces her as his sister. He warns her that these people are his type of people and he knows how they are. They will devour her if they come to know she is a wealthy Protestant. Shannon understands and feels afraid. She stays back while Joseph goes up to Mike at his desk. Mike is supposed to find him and his sister Jobs in a roof. They are going to stay at Molly Kay's. While Joseph is getting themselves registered, some men including the man who defeated Mike start harassing Shannon. Joseph asks them to stop otherwise he will beat the life out of them. The boxer asks him to dare do so. And the fight begins. Joseph wins. Mike looks impressed. So is Grace, a gorgeous burlesque dancer. Mike brings them to Molly Kay's. Molly is a daunting, straightforward woman and her place is more of a brothel than an inn. She gives one room to two of them to share. Shannon protests. Joseph stops her and thanks Molly for her help. The rent is one dollar a week. It is a drabby room. Mike hears Shannon sobbing with her back to him. Shannon takes the bed to sleep on. Joseph is lying on the mat. He says he feels happy to be in America. Everything seems accessible to have. He talks about the land he is going to get in Oklahoma. He says he is already dreaming of growing wheat there. Shannon is secretly shedding tears. She didn't expect everything to be this difficult. She takes out her frustration by beating Joseph with the pillow. She says it was her idea that brought Joseph here. Joseph asks her not to forget that it is because of him that she is safe here. Back in Ireland, Nora wonders how Shannon is and how could she be so indifferent. Daniel shows her letters Shannon has been writing him ever since she left. She didn't want Nora to know. He tells her that Shannon is now in Boston. Nora starts to read the letters when they hear a noise outside. The tenants have come to burn their house down. Captain Moonlight, they raise the slogan and break the windows. There is fire everywhere in no time. Daniel asks his wife to escape. She is gathering scattered letters. Stephen has come to help. He helps them get out. He grabs Shannon's framed photo on his way out. Stephen consoles Daniel that he still has his lands to live on. So Daniel does care about his riches unlike what he had been saying in the pubs. Nora is quite devastated. They tell Stephen about Shannon being in Boston. Stephen says they should sail to America to find her. The runaways have found a job in a poultry shop on daily wages. It has been two months in Boston. Shannon plucks the chickens. All the men find Joseph's sister the prettiest girl there. Joseph laughs and asks them to stay on guard as she is wild. They witness it to be true. She stops to take a break when a staff member holds her by the shoulder to push her back to work. She shouts at him to not touch her and calls her bad names. He says he will not get today's wage for her misbehavior. She insults him again. He says her tomorrow's pay is cancelled. 
To everybody's surprise, she goes on to ask him to cancel her pay for the day after tomorrow as well and insults him again. Days pass by. Shannon is washing her clothes. Joseph, who is done with his, looks at her taking longer to wash. He asks her to watch him, teaching her how to hand wash clothes properly and quickly. She stares at him teaching her how to scrub and rinse. She stares with a certain admiration in her eyes for him. Later that evening, Joseph sits to count his savings. Both of them are saving to buy what each of them needs to reach Oklahoma and race for land. Shannon is behind the curtain screen and is taking off her clothes to get into her nightgown. Joseph's gaze falls upon a bit of her bare body. He looks away. Shannon seems to try to get his attention and looks upset about not receiving it. Joseph starts taking off his clothes to sleep. Shannon stays behind the screen and peeks through holes to look at his body. Both steal glimpses of each other. They finally lie down to sleep. Shannon asks him if she is beautiful. Joseph says she is the most beautiful girl he ever saw. She says okay and turns around to sleep. Joseph is at the club. He starts boxing men and wins every match. People are cheering for him and dancing women are falling in love with him. Mike has got his player he can bet on and capitalize. He introduces him to Mr. Darcy Burke, a member of the city council. One morning, Shannon wakes up to Grace carrying Joseph to the room. He is covered in blood and bruises from the boxing match. Shannon jumps out of the bed and looks worried. She helps him lie down in bed. Grace sits beside Joseph and caresses his hair. Shannon is clearly not liking Grace's friendliness. Grace requests Shannon to listen to her in private. Grace asks Shannon how her handsome brother is as a person. Shannon says he is not that interesting of a man and goes back inside the room. Joseph shows her the money he won in the fight. Shannon isn't happy with his ways of doing things. For many days to come, Shannon would pluck chicken while Joseph would win the boxing matches. Joseph has purchased a nice suit and a hat for himself. He is receiving many compliments wherever he goes. He asks Shannon how his hat looks. She says she doesn't like it at all. She goes to buy a second-hand pair of shoes with her friends from work. They all stand fascinated by a pretty dress in a shop. Some rich ladies pass by. Shannon mimics their snobbish attitude and laughs at them. She and Joseph are heading back to the inn. They come across Mike and Burke. Joseph goes to chat with them. They all look pleased with Joseph, the heroic fighter of their club. Amid their talk, Burke's eyes fall upon Shannon standing farther away. He shows his interest in her and murmurs nasty comments. Joseph asks him to mind his words. Mike doesn't like the way Joseph is behaving with Burke. Burke says it is fine since Joseph is whom they need. Then he tells Joseph that there is an Italian man he is going to box with. Joseph says he will fight and he will win but this is something he does for himself, not for anybody. Joseph walks away. Mike comes after him and tells him that Burke is a very important person to him. If Joseph messes up things for Mike, he will be deprived of the roof and food. Then he will find nowhere to go in Boston. Joseph nods that he has understood. Mike looks back at Burke to tell him that all is under control now. Joseph goes inside the inn and finds Shannon playing the piano the way she always wanted, loud and hip-hop. She drinks along with the other women there and laughs joyfully. Joseph goes upstairs to the room and starts doing his push-ups. Shannon enters the room and tells him that he is a changed person now. She says he has spent all of his savings on fancy clothes instead of saving for Oklahoma. Joseph says he is sure he will earn more with boxing. They hear Grace calling for Joseph from the street. Joseph goes up to the window and greets her. She says she will wait for him this Sunday in church. He says he will be there. Shannon looks jealous and talks ill of Grace. Joseph laughs. She says the men in the club and those council members are exploiting him. Joseph says they respect him. She argues that they are not sincere with him. Joseph gets angry and throws her over his shoulder and throws her in the bathtub. He shouts at her that she is merely jealous of him. He has earned better than she has. Shannon says he better watch and see her earning more now. She goes into the room and slams it shut. Molly and other women have gathered around on hearing the chaos. Molly looks at Joseph. She knows they aren't siblings. The women laugh. They knew it all along. The next day, Dermody comes running to the inn to fetch Joseph for the fight with the Italian guy. Joseph learns Shannon is at the club as well. He rushes there to see her among the burlesque dancers on the stage, barely dressed. She is here out of spite to earn more than him. He asks her to get down. She says he better mind his own business. He takes off his shirt and wraps it around her. Burke asks Joseph to fight. Joseph refuses. Burke says he will split the winning with him which will be $200. It is a very handsome amount. Shannon asks Joseph to agree. Joseph is confused that it was her who didn't want him to fight anymore. Shannon says with this money he will never have to fight again and they can easily reach Oklahoma. Joseph is hung on her using the termos. She is thinking of them as one. They look at each other with a subtle confession of love for each other. Joseph gets down to fight. The crowd cheers for him. The Italian guy is quite big and intimidating. The boxing begins. To the disappointment of many, Joseph is losing at the start. But then he picks up and seems to win now. Burke is overjoyed and is enjoying the match now. He asks Mike to bring Shannon for his pleasure while he watches the match he is going to win the bet on. Mike forces Shannon to sit on Burke's lap. Joseph sees this and is distracted. He gets away from the match and pushes the crowd away to reach Burke. He punches Burke to let Shannon go. 
The crowd forces him back to the match. The Italian boxer takes advantage of the situation and wins with a sucker punch. Badly hurt and defeated, Joseph falls down. Mike slaps Shannon for ruining everything. He asks for Joseph to be thrown out of his club. Mike expels both of them out of Molly's place after taking all of their earnings. Stephen has arrived with Mr. and Nora in Boston. They are staying there and searching for Shannon. They are showing her photo to people around and offer prize money for anyone who finds her. Joseph knows about it but doesn't say a word about it to Shannon. Joseph and Shannon have been walking the streets for the past three days. They are starved and cold. No one is willing to give Joseph a job since he is Irish. They pass by a big house. Joseph says it is empty. They break into it. It is grand inside with a beautiful Christmas tree and pristine crockery on the dining table. Joseph runs to eat the food he finds there. Shannon looks at herself in the mirror. She says to Joseph that she never had in mind that they will be led to such helplessness and search for having land. Joseph asks her to forget everything and just sit at the dining table. He says he will serve her. They will pretend it is her house and he is her servant. Shannon says no, he should sit beside her and they will pretend they are married. This house is theirs. Shannon asks her how he wanted his land to be. He said he dreamt of having a stream passing through it. Shannon says her dream was to have a green pasture. Stream and pasture complete each other. They lean in. Joseph says he pretends tonight that he loves her. She says she pretends she loves him back. Their lips meet. After a moment, they hear voices. The residents have woken up and must have heard the intruders. Shannon and Joseph run. The residents chase them with a gun. They shoot and the bullet hits Shannon. Joseph picks her up and escapes. On finding no help, he has no option but to take her to her parents. He knew where they were staying. Stephen receives him and tends to Shannon's wound. Joseph leaves, knowing that she will be safe now. Months later, we see Joseph laboring in the Ozark Mountains. He hasn't forgotten Shannon but surely has left his dream of having land, until one day he sees his father in a dream. He leaves his work and joins the caravan, heading to the Cherokee Strip Land Run of 1893. He buys a horse that is too wild to tame, but that is the only option he has. Tomorrow is the race. The plots are marked with white flags. One needs to race to the plot he desires, switch the flag with his flag and claim the plot. Shannon is here too with her parents and Stephen who have surrendered to her. Stephen tells Shannon that he has found a plot with pasture and stream the way she wanted. He says they will get it, marry and reside here together. Shannon doesn't look happy hearing that. She goes to teach her mother how to wash clothes properly the way Joseph had taught her. Joseph sees her and comes to talk to her. He never expected her to be here. Their conversation is marked with multiple awkward pauses. They wish each other good luck for tomorrow. Joseph looks at her and praises her for her determination, for knowing what she wanted and for finally getting it. Stephen asks Joseph to stay away from Shannon. The race is about to begin but Joseph's horse is uncontrollable. He knows nothing about horses. Shannon asks him to hold him by the bridle. Mr. and Nora have sneaked into a plot of their choice already. They plan to act as if they have raced there. The race begins. Joseph's horse is in his control and is running faster. Stephen and Shannon have reached the plot Stephen had in mind. He rides the horse down in the stream. Shannon reluctantly follows but falls off the horse into the stream. Joseph has come there and asks Shannon if she is okay. Stephen stops and retreats towards Shannon. Shannon urges Joseph to go ahead and claim the plot. Stephen takes out his pistol. Joseph jerks it away from his hand and pushes him off his horse. It is not Ireland, he reminds Stephen and rides off to the plot. Shannon beams with joy seeing him with the flag. Joseph is happy for a moment and then looks lost. This is the land he wanted but he wanted it with Shannon. Stephen runs his horse over Joseph, who hits his head on a stone and bleeds. Stephen takes the flag and grabs Shannon. Shannon slaps him and asks him to leave. Stephen leaves, seeing her run towards Joseph. Joseph professes his love for Shannon and breathes his last breath. Shannon wails. She wants him back to be with her on the land they dreamed of. She says she fell in love with him at the first sight. Just like his dad, Joseph comes back to life. They kiss and uphold the flag, claiming the land they have come far and away from their country to. 